Good day. My name is Jill Clarson and I work at the University of Cape Town. The myth given to me is in this box. So if we open it, it states, open access for books is only affordable for funded authors from rich institutions. Let's ask a few pertinent questions that arise from looking at this myth. Who decided that there should be a price tag to acquire knowledge? Which part of the process of creating and sharing new research requires funding? Why are some universities excluded from sharing their research? And is the opposite true? That authors who lack funding, who come from universities with fewer resources, cannot participate in the knowledge economy by authoring books? In trying to provide a holistic response to these questions, we have to emphasize that to date, Commercial publishers have monopolized the publishing landscape with one goal in mind, to make a profit from authors' works. And now the costs associated with printing hard copies of books have been shifted to the open access model. To, make the, to put this another way, the practice of open access has been negatively shaped by the notion that there is a need to pay to publish in order to have free access to books thereby commodifying knowledge production. According to the Budapest Open Access Initiative of 2002, the definition of open access is to freely access and share research with no financial barriers, giving authors the control of the integrity of their work by acknowledging and citing them. Yet for too long, traditional publishers have retained their influence by informing authors that they have a publishing role to play. And the way they add it is to uh, provide value to the author's scholarly work by upholding research quality through the peer review process, the infrastructure that is used to preserve their work, and the fact that they understand selling markets. Most authors, on the other hand, create knowledge at no cost to the publisher and with the aim of participating in the knowledge economy, they want to disseminate and share their research globally. Peer reviewers, who are the research peers, do not charge fees for their work. Open source software can be used to create and preserve books. And even though dis and dissemination can occur on the internet, freely accessible and discoverable to everyone. There is an alternative publishing model the library as a publisher. This publishing model practices diamond open access, which allows books to be published that are freely accessible by the reader and at no cost to the author. Authors retain their copyright and their research is shared and disseminated with very few barriers. Library publishing is sustained through the operations budget of the university with book production handled by publishing teams based in academic libraries. There is a no-cost recovery or for-profit motive in this publishing model. What's more, by publishing books open access via the library as publishing model, authors can focus entirely on the process of creating new knowledge without compromising on academic rigor. This model provides opportunities to publish books on local research topics, which can advance emerging areas of research. Plus, it helps grow the next generation of authors and affords collaboration between researchers at different universities without the burden of needing to first find funding. This way, books are published for the public good and ultimately can uplift society. Located on the African continent, in South Africa, the University of Cape Town Libraries started the service of Library as Publisher in 2015 with exploring how to use the open source software of Open Monograph Press and developing production workflow processes. With the overall goal of sharing African scholarship to as wide an audience as possible, UCT Libraries has published 21 open access monographs to date. The library publishing service is part of UCT's open access policy and has the underpinning of social justice principles. Reggie Raju, the director of research and learning at UCT's libraries, states that the practice of social justice requires a twofold approach. 
First, the breaking down of unfair bias inherent in publishing structures. And then secondly, the building up of publishing practices that are inclusive and empowering. Thus, this publishing practice then stimulates a bi-directional flow of information and a true exchange of knowledge, uh, global knowledge occurs. The formatting and very basic design of the books are all completed by librarians. Books are available in various formats, including video and audio, and text can be accessed by voice readers. The titles are all discoverable via persistent identifiers and harvestable by major search engines. Each of the titles we've published so far have been viewed or downloaded at least a few hundred times. We've also seen that downloads occur, occur across the globe for books with very specific local South African content. For example, a monograph written by the University of Cape Town students aimed at students of South African constitutional law has been downloaded hundreds of thousands of times over the last 18 months. Another example is a monograph written in Sesotho, one of the 11 official languages of South Africa with a target audience of high school learners. The need to disseminate um, African scholarship has resulted in the platform being scaled into a continental publishing platform, which is available to any South African, to any African university to publish and showcase their scholarship from their own region. The platform pr uh, practices diamond open access and thus scholarship can be created and shared at no cost to the author and institution. It provides opportunities to empower all African authors to participate in creating knowledge that are relatable for their own society. This will guarantee expansion in research topics and an increase in open access books from all African universities, irrespective of their resources. From the argument presented of using the library as publisher model, it has proved that open access publishing is absolutely not only affordable for funded authors from rich institutions. So that's another myth about open access publishing that has officially been busted.